Welcome to our 500th freaking episode. We have a great show coming up and a huge announcement to make, so wait for that. But first, let's take a trip back to the past, shall we? Welcome to the first episode of Stu Does America. Before you do anything, look around for the magical button called subscribe and click it. This tells the universe, of course, that you want shows like this that feature smart analysis, dumb laughs, and only occasionally the opposite. Coming up, Bernie is going to use his piping hot sex appeal to sell socialism. Glenn Beck stops by to talk about Ukraine, coronavirus, and how he seems to think that he has some level of control over the show. And AOC explains economics and racism with the IQ of a hamster. <laughs> yes, that was over two years ago. Or maybe it was 11. I, who the hell can tell anymore? But now it is year of our Lord, 2022. And yes, Bernie Sanders is still shelling out his stupid, sexy socialism. Glenn Beck is still trying to control my show and my life, and AOC still has the brain of a hamster that a toddler threw against the wall. So those are the things that are the same, but what has changed since February of 2020? Well, this pesky little coronavirus bug became a global pandemic. We had a president back in the day without dementia. Russia was just kind of, kind of at war with Ukraine. Inflation was at normal levels, not destroying our entire economy. We were still in Afghanistan. Greta Thunberg was plastered all over your media, yelling at us in that awful, awful voice. How dare you? Minneapolis hadn't been reduced to ash by Antifa, yet following the George Floyd ruling. The 2020 election that would nearly kill everyone's hopes was still nine months away. The border was relatively secure-ish. Not to mention Ruth Bader Ginsburg was still alive. John Lewis, Chadwick Boseman, Alex Trebek, Kirk Douglas, Sean Connery, Regis Philbin, Jerry Stiller, ah, Ben Halen, Little Richard, Kobe Bryant, and of course, uh, many, many more. So please, please, please tell me that you didn't forget about all of them. And you didn't forget about the murder hornets. That happened too in the interim. After hearing all of that, the truth is clear. This show has really screwed this country up. The most important thing you can do in your life right now is click like or subscribe or whatever you can to support the show. We do appreciate it. Even after 500 episodes, blazetv.com slash stew is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. Use the code stew to save 10 bucks. Today, we get Glenn Beck Radio, the band, back together. We talk to Glenn Beck, Pat Gray, and even Jeff Fisher tonight. Uh, I have a huge announcement coming up at the end of the show that I think you've been waiting for, but... Hang around for that. We start by doing 500 episodes. It's been 500 freaking episodes we've been together, and what a glorious run it has been. I will say this. Sincerely, thank you. Thank you so much for showing up to this stupid show every night. I thank you so much for hanging out and sharing the, spreading the word. Thank you so much for you know, buying Nancy Pelosi sucks pens. Thank you so much for all the stuff that you guys have done to make this show a success. The one that's still in the air after 500 episodes, which who could have possibly imagined it? Certainly not me. Uh, we have seen incredible growth over the past couple of years. We've been setting records just the past few weeks, just set a brand new record for uh, overall listens. We're up, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think it was something like 36% so far this year. Uh, you guys just keep coming back, and we really do appreciate that. It means a lot because, honestly, we spend a decent amount of time. It's just a couple of us working on this show, and, uh, you know, we just kind of try to do this every day and, and give you some sort of perspective and hopefully make it mildly entertaining on occasion. I had forgotten about that sort of slogan I mentioned in the clip we played earlier which was uh, smart analysis, uh, dumb laughs, and only occasionally the opposite. That really has been what this show has become, and I hope you appreciate that in some way. We really do here uh, appreciate you. Uh, we're going to be talking to Glenn Beck. We're going to be talking to Jeffy. We're going to be talking to Pat Gray about the news of the day and, and a bunch of kind of reflections about everything going on in the world and what has happened over the past couple of years because it has been 
I mean, let's be honest about it, a catastrophe. Well, ever, ever since this show came on the air, our country has been in a constant state of catastrophe. That's where we have been. We apologize for bringing it on. A lot of people blame us for all of it. And honestly, you know, we're just, we're just selfish enough to believe it. Now, it was our 500th episode. We decided we wanted to have a cake made uh, for the show. Uh, do we have it? Yeah, bring it in. Um, now, one thing I will tell you, uh, we did not have the budget for a cake. Uh, so we've come up with this. Uh, here it is. We have 500th episode pudding. Because that's all we could uh, afford. Can we can we show the overhead shot here? There it is, 500 episodes. Okay, that tech technically says 500 episodes. So we did not even have the budget, however, to get the wording right. But we will celebrate with some 500 episode pudding. I have my handy dandy spoon that I always. If, if you didn't know this, 500 episodes always have a giant spoon in this pocket, just in case a big bowl of pudding comes around. So. Thank you. Cheers. If you're at home with your 500 episode pudding, cheers to you and yours as we celebrate a giant bowl of pudding that God only knows what they actually put in this, but down the hatch. <laughs> I gotta say, pudding. I, I know Joe Biden loves pudding, and I'm with him on that. Pudding is good, and I love it. Happy 500 episodes. Glenn Beck's coming up next. Oh, what a show. It makes sense why people get life insurance, probably because they're going to kill themselves after eating giant bowls of rancid pudding. Especially uh, term coverage, is, which is surprisingly affordable if you've never looked into it. Why not pay you know, a little money, mon uh, little money each month uh, to protect the ones you love? That's kind of a basic thing. If you're going to do this, choose Ladder. Ladder is 100% digital. There's no doctors. There's no needles. There's no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, you can just answer a few questions about your health in an application. You just need a few minutes and a phone call uh, or laptop to apply. Ladder smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out if you're instantly approved. No hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. You get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. How awesome is this? Ladder policies are issued by insurers with long proven histories of paying claims. They're rated A and A plus by I am best. Since life insurance costs more when you age, you better get on this bandwagon now. Go to ladderlife.com slash stew today to see if you're instantly approved. L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash stew. Ladderlife.com slash stew. Well, it's felt like 50,000 episodes, but no, it's only been 500. And today we celebrate kind of getting the old gang back together with Glenn Beck, Pat Gray, Jeff Fisher, all in the same program. Could you possibly be more excited? Probably. Probably. His newest special, of course, we're talking about Glenn Beck, is coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern, right after the show. It's called Biden's Border Bloodbath, the Deadly Crisis Exposed. Glenn, thanks for coming on the program. 500 episodes. Aren't you excited? I am. And I noticed that you had a, and it kind of, it kind of cheapens this a little bit, because mm -hmm. I was going to give you a, for 500 episodes. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. You've got your mug, mm -hmm. and then there is this. Do you recognize this mug by any chance? Uh, it does seem to be Johnny This Johnny is Carson. the cup that sat on Johnny's desk uh, his entire career. As you take a shot there in the light, I don't know if you see that. Can but, you uh, make that out there? Yeah, I'll I put need, it right here. No, no, please don't. No, no, please don't. Fine. No, 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 let's let. Okay, give me the cup. Give me the cup. <laughs> And I just wanted to say, this, you have that. Yes. This is what you get after about 14,000 episodes. Oh, 14,000 episodes. 14, That's, the line. episodes. That's, That's the line. That's the line. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. So you have your mug and, you know, I have. I mean, I don't know why everyone seems to just being, want to upstage me on, on this incredible I mean, day. it's a cute little effort. It is. It's a cute little effort. Mm -hmm. but. I see that. Uh, tonight you have a special. Mm -hmm. Biden's border bloodbath. Have we reached a bubble when it comes to alliteration on your show. A big bubble. A big bubble. A big bubble. Because Biden's border bloodbath is a big bubble. Yeah. Uh, lots, lots of bees. What, right. this, is a big, uh, this is a big special, actually. Yeah, though. yeah, it is. I mean, it's a this, super special. Despite me making fun of your title, yeah. this is a big one. Because well, we, this we is something... named it Biden's uh, bloodbath because that's really what it is. People don't, are, are not looking at the border 
the way they should. This is a bloodbath. You've, you're in, uh, empowering the cartels. You're empowering whatever is happening in human trafficking. And you are killing tens of thousands of Americans with fentanyl. Mm. In any other scenario, we would be talking about the numbers of people that are dying because of this. But because it's a progressive policy, we're just going to ignore it. It's a bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. And you're not even mentioning the fact that many of these illegal immigrants come across without masks. Uh, so what, of them. Cause, what kind what of damage could they damage be doing? Damage is happening there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh very, gosh. very terrible. Um, so th- this is all leading up to, we don't know for sure if it's going to be May 23rd, but this date where they release, they get rid of this Title 42 situation. It's, gonna, it's going to be a run for the border. Right. I mean, we know that illegal immigrants have come to the border in hundreds of thousands, millions, really, since Joe Biden took office. And many of them pointing out that's the reason they're there. You know, Donald Trump didn't like us. He hated us. But we know that uh, Joe Biden loves us. He invited us to come here during the debates. And this is one of those stories that is not going away, despite how hard they're trying to hide it. I think everybody knows. Did you see his Hispanic popularity? Mm. His Hispanic numbers are through the floor. And... Obviously, there's a lot of black people that aren't just aren't black because his numbers are also going through the floor with blacks. Mm. Um, You know, people are aware that you can only lie to them so much. Now, I thought that line would have happened long ago, but everything is going in the wrong direction. And Hispanic, his popularity in Hispanics has fallen to... I, I can't, but it's an ungodly number. Uh, oh, especially when they, you know, the Democratic Party is built on 70, 80, 90 percent approval from these uh, more minority groups. You start knocking those down even to 50 percent, they're in deep trouble. Deep trouble. Deep trouble. Um, let's talk about uh, when it comes to the border, his approval rating for the border is about as low as anything else. I remember right after the Afghanistan crisis where his, you know, of course, his approval rating really Really, It was going down before that, but it really started to tank when Afghanistan happened. And they released all the different issues, like the economy and you know all, all these different things. He's underwater on all of them. Yeah, on all of them. The only one that was worse than Afghanistan, though, was the border. And that wasn't even being covered by the media. Is, if you were to look at all the, the, uh, the portfolio of Biden catastrophes going on right now, which one scares you the most? Oh, God. prioritize them? <laughs> Can you? Uh, no, I don't think I can. Um, what we're doing with the dollar, what we're doing with Russia, um, uh, what we're doing with energy, what we're doing with the border. No, I don't think I could prioritize it. I really don't. I don't think I, I mean, they are all catastrophic. It's not like they're bad. Each one of them. Mm. Think of just the border. We're letting millions of people including terrorists, we're just letting them in. We have no idea who they are. Meanwhile, DHS is looking at mom and dad who are at a PTA meeting, you know, or a school board meeting. We just on the terror front. Then if this continues and we have food shortages, America's not going to have the food shortages that they're going to have in South America. What do you think is going to happen to our open border then? Mm. Gosh, that's, that's a great point. I mean, if this hits like it's a, it looks like it's going to, this could be massive just yeah. for the border. Um, you know, the, uh, the border itself has been one of these things that have bounced around for a long time. And, and, and presidents have, almost every president has had some issue on the border. But I feel like in a normal presidency, the border situation with Biden would be the biggest story. Like, we'd all be talking about it. It would be the thing that dominated conservative media, certainly. There would be all the liberal think pieces on justifying why it's okay to let all these people in um, without even screening them or anything. I mean, it's totally swallowed up by the news cycle. And again, the border is something, because we've covered it for a very long time, and every time we try to cover it, Stu, what happens? (laughs) Something else terrible. (laughs) Yeah, well, something else terrible. But we try to get people to talk about it, and no one will go on record. Yeah. They'll say it to us off air. Right. And why is that? Because of the cartels. 
The cartels, if you're in that area, the cartels, and we had this on radio today, and we'll talk talk a little bit about this tonight. Chip Roy is going to be on with me tonight. Mm. Um, but the, the border guards, the border agents, and our National Guard, they are, their cell phones are being tracked by the cartels, okay? And they are getting threats. They're, the cartels are sending pictures to their phones and saying, you're next. You're, you're threatening the National Guard and no one is going to talk about it? No, there's nobody that's willing to talk about it, either because of politics or because you talk about it once and you get the message, don't ever do that again. Mm. Um, so we're on our 500th episode today, which mm-hmm. has only been a couple of years. If you go back to the beginning when you first started doing talk radio, we were t- together doing this in New York and Connecticut way back in the day, which seems like a million years ago now, million. 1999. Like four lifetimes. You know, gosh. Um, and probably one of the very first shows we did was about abortion. And I, I yeah, well, I mean, we've hit it multiple, not, yeah. not the whole show, but yeah. talked about it because there, it was always a big yeah. story. Here we are 20 plus years later. Did you ever, going back to that time, ever think you'd see the day where Roe versus Wade no. was overturned in your lifetime? No, no. But I always thought that Roe versus uh, Wade being overturned would mean an abortion ban. Mm-hmm. It's not. No. This is very logical. This is very freedom. This, this should be fine for everybody. California, you're going to get babies being born and then being left to die in California and Illinois and New York. <laughs> you're saying this in a tone as if it's supposed to ease well, my mind. Well, if you're on the left, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what you wanted. Yeah. Hey, you're not going to get it in the Bible Belt, but you're going to get it in California and New York and probably Illinois, probably Oregon. You'll get those laws. Washington State. You should be celebrating. You should be shouting your abortion. Mm. But they uh, are they are so desperate for total control that uh, they're not shouting. They're shouting in another direction. Is because normally I would cheer on this way of dealing with an issue, right? Like, hey, let the states figure it out. Even with health care, an yeah. issue we have real strong opinions on. And, hey, okay, if Massachusetts but wants you to and do something I are, crazy, but you and I and, and probably most of the audience know that this is murder. It's, yeah, yeah, I guess, and this makes us extremists, I guess, because I don't, like, this is a, a step in the right direction. So yeah, states at least don't step. have to, yeah, a big step. They don't have to participate in this, at least, if they don't want to. However, this does not solve the problem. This is the beginning of still a very long road. Well, we'll never solve this through fiat. We'll never solve this from government telling us what to do. Mm-hmm. It will, it has to be a change of heart. This is a very good step, and I think, honestly, I think this court case and a couple of others that are still coming, assuming that they go, I think it gives us extra time. I think God cannot bless us while we are endorsing and killing children. He can't. And I think we've run out of all of our IOUs. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the founders, you know, did some great things. And, uh, you know, so we got God's favor. And I think he's like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think this might actually give us more time, might give us a fighting chance because we need God's protection. And any state that says, no, we're not going to kill children, I think we'll get God's protection. It's going to be tough. It's certainly better than the alternative. I, I, oh, I, can you imagine I, I, living in California? Wouldn't, if you lived in California, you believe what we did, wouldn't you now for sure, absolutely positively go, um, we are going to slide into the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> because we are now going so far, yeah. we're just evil on everything. Mm. This is—it's just an amazing. It's an amazing. It's been an amazing couple of years. I will tell you that. Yeah. Glenn Beck, uh, the new special tonight: Biden's border bloodbath, the deadly crisis exposed. It's coming up next. Don't miss it right here on Blaze TV. BlazeTV.com/stu is the place to go to get your uh, subscription. You could save ten bucks if you use the promo code Stu. Glenn, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Buying or selling a home is already one of the most stressful things you can do, and it can be 10 times worse if you're not working with the right agent. Generally speaking, our homes are our biggest investment, and that's a lot of responsibility, and that's why you need a real estate agent that you can 
you know, get to understand how serious of a, a time this is. That's why uh, we always talk about realestateagentsitrust.com. We, uh, realestateagentsitrust.com works with the best agents in every market. Uh, they do their homework. They talk to every agent before inviting them to join the network. And they only work with full-time professionals, no part-time or inexperienced agents. Uh, they make the introduction. Uh, they follow through the entire buying and selling process to make sure that you're satisfied. This is Glenn's company. Uh, he's been new in this, uh, had this company for a long time, and it's been able to make the real estate transaction process a heck of a lot better for thousands and thousands of people. You can be next. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to find the best agent in your area. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Joining me now is Pat Gray, purveyor of Kexi Cookies at Kexi.com, as well as Pat Gray Unleashed right here on Blaze TV. Pat, welcome to the 500th episode of Stu Does America. Oh, it's, it's what a momentous, special occasion. Thank you for having me. It's an incredible Thank honor you for, it's for unbelievable. you. It's unbelievable. For you me, know? yes. I mean, it yeah, must it really be is. amazing for you. Oh, mm-hmm. I, to words here. fail. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, you just uh, <laughs> celebrated a, an anniversary of your own. It was the 15,403rd episode of uh, Pat Gray Unleashed. Really? Is that what you mean? Oh, I was... <laughs> I was, I, I'm surprised at how many episodes. How many do you do per day? Uh, 12. 12. We do 12 a day. Really? Yeah, yeah, for 17 years. Wow. That's so, a, yeah. Seems like a lot of work. <laughs> it, does, uh, it is a lot of work. Thank <laughs> you for appreciating that. You know, it's a you're, lot of work. I appreciate it. Let me ask you this. <laughs> okay. In all the 15,203 three. Three episodes mm-hmm. you've done of Pat yeah. Gray Unleashed, did you ever at any point actually believe you would see the day that Roe versus Wade was overturned? No, I did not. No, I mean, I think we've talked about that on occasion. Uh, I was stunned by this leaked ruling, and we'll see if it still holds up. I hope it does. But um, you do have to ask the question, what's next? Interracial marriage? Is that what we're going to go after next? LGBTQQIA2 plus children not being in the same classroom with hetero children? Wait, <laughs> You know, Why wouldn't they be allowed in the same uh, classroom? Women not being allowed to vote, of course. The new Eric Swalwell thing. Uh, what's next? Would you be surprised? Wait, why would they? If the women's right to vote is taken away? I, I'm terribly I, surprised, I, yes. <laughs> would you? Yeah. Really? Because Eric be, wouldn't be. He wouldn't be surprised. He wouldn't be surprised. No. No. And here's a guy who slept with a Chinese spy for mm-hmm. two years. So I wouldn't think very many things surprise him. I anyway. will say, for, in Eric Swalwell's case specifically, mm-hmm. yeah. if abortion didn't exist, how many new little Chinese spies would be running around this country? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Probably dozens. 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 Right? <laughs> this is all this guy seems to do is have sex with Chinese spies. So, right. I mean, that's right. So there's one argument on their side in their favor. Yes. Wait, wait. So are they actually saying that LGBTQ children won't be oh, allowed? Have you not heard? I've heard that every day since the ruling. <laughs> I haven't even heard every that one. Every day What's since the, the ruling. What would the logic be? I don't know. But that's our thought process, I guess, on the right is we think, OK, we got this done. You know, it needs to go is uh, <laughs> Whitey marrying anybody else, right? But a Whitey, huge priority for Clarence Thomas specifically. Yeah, it does not want race, interracial marriage. Right? Is it possible he just doesn't <laughs> like Ginny and looking for this to use as a way to divorce <laughs> yes, her I without so. actually asking? And of course, Alito has been screaming for years that LGBTQ kids shouldn't be in classrooms <laughs> like, with hetero kids. No, I. <laughs> I'm not a historian, but was there a time in which we had separate LGBTQ You know, I'm not aware of it, but I'm not a historian either, and I'm not a biologist, so, <laughs> so what do I know? You don't even know what women are. I, I don't even know that. Because, I, I, you know, looking at the ruling in particular, if you, I don't know, take this weird step and read it, mm-hmm. there's a whole section in there specifically designed for this dumb argument. Yeah. Where they said, hey, you know, Alito stepped in and he said, hey, I'm, and this is a big ruling. I know. I know what everyone's going to say. So let me address it in the ruling mm-hmm. where I specifically say this does not touch any of these other crazy rights. It's not about interracial marriage at all. Right. This is something specific because we're talking about a human life here. And that has not stopped the rhetoric at all. Not at all. In fact, it probably inspired more of it. Mm-hmm. They're so nuts on the left that, you know, they'll yell and scream anything. They'll do anything to get their way. And they're, who knows what they're going to do legislatively or try to do legislatively. Um, but the light continues that this bans abortion, 
right? And it does nothing of the kind, as we all, as we, anybody with a brain knows. It does not ban abortion, uh, not even in Texas. Texas would just decide their own law, and I suppose we'd keep to the six-week rule, maybe. Um, Oklahoma would probably do the same. California will probably continue to kill babies up to and including the birth. So, I mean, it doesn't change almost anything, really. Yeah. And I think there will be some states. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Texas went with an all-out ban. Or th- yeah, there's it could thir- happen. There's 13 states that have the trigger laws in here, right, that would change the rules if Roe versus Wade is overturned. Yes. Some of them seem to be, I wouldn't say complete bans, because there does seem to be exceptions in every state. I mean, for rape yeah. and incest and, and uh, life of the mother. And I would definitely make the life of the mother yeah. rule. Yeah, right. And so that seems to be... In all of these bills, even in the most restrictive bans, it's not a full ban um, mm-hmm. of the procedure. How do you see this playing out? Because I, I think there's this idea that, you know, it's going to be really difficult for women to get abortions. Man, I look mm-hmm. at the landscape here. You're going to have half the country where it's legal, just straight out legal. You, you are going to have mm-hmm. people ordering pills from overseas sent to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there are already abortion organizations popping up and saying, hey, if we can't do abortions, what we're going to do is we're going to take that money and we're going to use it to transport women out of state so they can get them. I mean, I, I'm not saying there will be no change from this. There obviously this is a major moment and I don't want to underplay it. But like the actual amount of abortions, are they going to decrease by a really noticeable amount? I'd like to think so. Yeah. I, I hope so. But they probably won't. They probably won't. I mean, you've already got corporation stepping in like Amazon, who's going to pay their employees $4,000 to go get an abortion somewhere else. If, say, Texas would ban it, they'll just give you four grand. It's not going to cost anybody four grand to get an abortion in California or Arizona or New Mexico. Uh, So people are actually going to make money on their abortions, apparently, from Amazon. But, you know, there's still going to be a way to have one if you desperately want to have one. If you had to schedule now and plan a an abortion vacation, where would you take it? <laughs> where, where, what, what, what luxurious vacation spot would you go to if you needed to get an abortion? Huh. Um, <laughs> that's a tough question. Probably Illinois. <laughs> really? Of yeah. all places? Yeah, Illinois. I think Illinois, would be my dream I'm interested va- in, uh, vacation. To, ab- abortion vacation. Just a big Lori Lightfoot fan. What? Yeah, I love mm-hmm. her. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> She's done such a good job. In that <laughs> she has, area. hasn't she? She really has. It's really been a delight. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because, like, we keep looking at this stuff, and, and you know, you see the, the, the Supreme Court is supposedly this ultra-conservative court. Yet I look at their rulings, and generally speaking, they're not. I mean, we've, yeah. we've been disappointed by them over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Now you have six justices, though. You can lose Roberts and still get this ruling. What percentage here... Should we be afraid that this is going to change and come mm-hmm. back against us once again? I mean, it feels still too good to be true. It does. It does. Uh, it was such a nice, pleasant surprise to begin with. I don't know, 50-50? Uh, I, I, don't <laughs> have, I don't have total confidence in them. I really don't. <laughs> you can tell you've been a conservative for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been beaten down for so long that this kind of ruling, like you said, is hard to believe. It's all... It's, it seems too good to be true. L- l- how does this affect the midterms? Because there is, there's an idea out there that this is going to galvanize the left. Mm-hmm. It's going to make people in the middle who just want to make sure they have those abortions whenever they need them. And it's going to turn the tides against the Republican Party. Number one, do you think that's going to happen? Number two, is it worth it even if it does? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of confidence in Republicans either, so it Mm. may affect the midterms adversely with Republicans because they don't do a good job of educating people. You know, the left is shouting out all these lies and Republicans running for office are just kind of letting them do it. Whereas they should be educating people that this is not the end of abortion. If you want an abortion, you can still get an abortion somewhere, some, sometime. Uh, but if they don't do that, I, I think it might hurt them because of all the lies that are being told. It's like, The Handmaid's Tale. As yeah. Well. Uh, we, we actually highlighted <clears throat> um, uh, an AOC tweet uh, yesterday where she retweets someone who takes a quote from the opinion and says they specifically are targeting Obergefell, the gay marriage decision and the, uh, mm. the, the decision about interracial marriage. And it is literally the first line of a paragraph that ends in 
him saying this does not apply to those cases. It's yeah. like, yes, you could make the argument that uh, these, these things could be affected. However, they won't be affected. And yet they will come out. That's how brazen they are. They literally yeah. don't care whether they're even telling the truth or whether it can be easily disproved. Yeah, not in the least. And like you said, Alito made, made the point specifically so that this wouldn't happen. And yet it still does. Mm. Uh, but we have, we have liars in the White House. We have liars in the media. And they're getting together and, and they tell their lies every day. It's pretty effective. It is effective and it's very, very sad. Uh, Pat Gray, host of Pat Gray Unleashed right here on Blaze TV. He's done 15,230. No, 30. He's done 17 episodes. Wow, hundreds of episodes since we started. Uh, he, is, uh, he is, of course, on Blaze TV. Make sure you subscribe, blazetv.com slash stew. Promo code is stew. And, of course, kexi.com, K-E-K-S-I. Check out the cookies as well, the best cookies on earth. Thanks so much for stopping Thank by, you. Pat. Thanks. Well, it's finally happened. The Fed is realizing the dire straits our economy is in, thanks to our loose monetary policy. This is going to be a shocker to, I think, everyone in this audience. But apparently, if you spend trillions of dollars every year, there are repercussions to that. Who knew? I mean, uh, now that they know, I'm sure they'll change their ways. Uh, to play catch up, the Fed has been raising rates and plans seven times uh, to raise rates seven times this year alone. Uh, you're already starting to see those ripple effects in the housing market as people's buying power diminishes. Have you considered what could happen if the stock market or economy stalls out? Uh, you might want to consider that. Don't wait until it happens. Uh, take some of your profits from maybe the stock market you've had over the past few years and solidify them with gold from Birch Gold. Uh, throughout history, gold has maintained a value better than any other investment in the world. If you text STU to 989898, you'll get a free zero obligation info kit. Uh, about holding gold uh, in a tax-sheltered retirement account. Again, text STU, that's me, S-T-U, to 989898 and secure the gains you've made while you can. STU to 989898 and protect your future with gold. It's our 500th episode. We're doing a little throwback today. We got the whole radio crew back together uh, for a special uh, episode. Glenn Beck, of course, Pat Gray, Boom. and now... We are joined by the one and only Jeff Fisher. Yay! Yes. Thank you. He's Thank the you. host of the... Congratulations, Stu. Thank you. I didn't realize that today was your 500th episode. It wow. is. It is very exciting. Uh, Chewing the Fat is the uh, podcast that, of course, you host. It's right here on Blaze TV. Don't, uh, of course, uh, miss it. Um, we have a big announcement coming up as well here in just a couple of minutes. So, Jeffy. Welcome Stu, to the 500th thank you. episode. You know, I was just I was listening to uh, Glenn talk about Mexico mm -hmm. and uh, you know how terrible it is there and how the cartels are pretty much running everything. They just talked today about their they have hundreds of journalists in uh, Mexico City protesting how come uh, the deaths of journalists aren't being investigated, mm -hmm. and they just reported that two more journalists were killed. <laughs> so I mean, the cartels are saying, wow. "Oh, you guys are protesting?" Uh, no. No, we, no, we're going to kill you. How too. does this happen in modern I mean, society? They've, they've already yeah. killed 11 journalists in Mexico this year already. So they killed 11, and then they went out to protest the 11 that no, were they, dead. Well, they killed nine. nine. I think they killed nine. They've killed they nine. They went out to protest the, the, those, more. and then they took two, two of them more. out of that group. Yeah. I mean, Good God. Unbelievable. You watch all these shows now, and no, no spoilers here, but I'm in the last part of Ozark at the moment. And like you watch it, and you're just like, uh, these cartels really, uh, and again, I, that's just a show, but like you realize how true to life a lot of these shows it are. It doesn't stop. They don't right? stop. They just keep stop. killing people and killing people. And the government, no matter whether the, the president of Mexico or these South American leaders are dedicated to taking the cartels out or are they the alternate, which is usually the case that they are, you know, working with them and making money right. and, and keeping the status quo. But it doesn't really seem to matter. They just keep growing in power. Yeah, keep keep sending keep sending more and they have more money. And it's just I mean, those that say no to the millions of dollars die. Yeah. And those that say yes, I mean, you end up pretty much dying at the end. So where, Everybody <laughs> dies in the end, Stu. That's the way it all That's ends just for all the of way us. it goes. Uh, just no matter how early it occurs. Um, so what, what's your take on like the idea that maybe legalizing drugs here... 100%. <laughs> I don't know. 
Of course. I, I don't know what I'm asking. But there is that case that has been popping around for a long time, this sort of, I guess, sort of libertarian case, that if you were to uh, legalize drugs here, then, like, Bear would be making heroin again and <laughs> serving it up to everybody on the corner. Mm -hmm. And in theory, there's no use for the cartels at that point because there's no profits to be made. But that's not holding true, though, right? I mean, we're, we're le we've seen legalization not, again, 100%. Let it go. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's just because you want to do it. Uh, that's that. I'm saying it's a policy perspective, not a personal preference. But they've already done it, right? They've legalized marijuana. I mean, almost. Yeah. Uh, In most of the country. Universally, yeah. 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 And we still have the problem because of taxes and, you know, the, the, this pot might not be as good as the other marijuana that I can get from the store, but I can get it cheaper and it's just, you know, it's just, I get this over here. So it doesn't it really hasn't, work. It really doesn't seem to have worked. Sometimes, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes uh, that does work. Well, like digital music is an example of this, like where you had the Napsters of the world, right? That yeah. were out there doing all their crazy stuff. Everyone's downloading the stuff for free. And they were like, okay, well now uh, as a music company, I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to start selling these songs. And you saw sure. that the Napsters eventually went away. With this, it does not seem to be the case. I and mean, I was just across, uh, I, I took a trip to Oklahoma this past uh, weekend. And the I drove. The reason you want to go to Oklahoma? <laughs> it was a wedding. It was fine. You know, it was, it was great. But you cross that border from Texas to Oklahoma, right across the border. Right there. Big dispensary, Absolutely. medical marijuana, or medical marijuana. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> I don't feel so good. Please give me pot. Uh, that's right there, right across the border. Yeah. And that's. Oklahoma, freaking Homa. That's not, you know, Colorado. That's not New York. That's not I California. I mean, this is, it's, it is widely available for Stu, people. But, Stu, that's not the hard stuff. So you think that's not, I mean, that's not, we, marijuana just leads to the hard stuff. Yeah. It's just a gateway drug. Yeah, well. <laughs> Again, 100%. Yeah, I know. I know you're in. Legalize we got that. It. The fentanyl thing, though, is big. I mean, it's terrible, it, right? It and really we're, we're losing lives, and it's being mixed in because it's cheaper. And, uh, you know, what we're, we're not, also, we're, you know, not only are we losing the, uh, the junkies and we're saying, you know, we all are addicted. Of course, they're, they're doing this. But we're losing the recreational users. You know, the, the sheriffs are talking about people that, you know, you go out with your friends once a month, like you, Stu. And like, you know, you run to a wedding in Oklahoma and you buy some cocaine. You buy some cocaine yeah. and you get some pot. Yeah, hey, that's fun. And you just do it. The cocaine of yesteryear isn't the cocaine of today. And so if it's mixed with the fentanyl, more than anything else, you could overdose, and that's what's happening. It's happening to kids. Yeah. You know, kids who are, you know, maybe taking, like, a, you know, an Adderall-type pill, which, right. of course, they shouldn't be doing, but, like, no, they should not kill you. But, well, that's the, you know, that's the prescription drugs that they're buying online mm. that are getting mixed like that because those are uh, counterfeit, mm -hmm. right? They're not, they're not, you're not, the odds are of you getting one that's mixed with fentanyl going to your local Walgreens or CVS oh, yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah, basically right? not. It's the ones that you're ordering online. That's, but this is a huge problem. Huge. Uh, I remember we did this with you when you were on, you were on Pat and Stu uh, one day, and we had you out in front of the, the, a big map or screen or something. And we oh, did, yeah, yeah. Remember this? And yes. we did the graph of... Um, uh, I remember me being pretty close. Co yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know your drugs. There's no question about that. It was like the cocaine crack deaths, the crack epidemic, as compared to the fentanyl epidemic. This is years ago. Yeah. And it's not even close. No, now it is not even close. It's it, a hundred thousand overdose deaths yeah. in a year. No, it's really sad. It really is. And I, I get this sense that, like, you know, the, the media take on this is, well, let's blame these big pharmaceutical companies. They came up with these opioids and blah 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 blah. And I get that. I'm not saying that no big company is ever perfect, and there's lots of problems you can find. But like, when I mean, the the company well, they're not they making they're not making the they're not making the fentanyl, drugs. right? No, they're yeah, not doing that, that. That's not like that's what's killing people. And you have this situation where, like, I mean, Purdue Pharmaceuticals is the one they blame the most. The Sackler family. They're oh, the yeah. evil, most evil they're, people in the world, can't according take to the those media. People anymore. They're out of business. And I don't Completely. know if people have noticed, this is still going on Completely. in a big way. I mean, they're, they're after them for the money they buried in the backyard now. <laughs> right? I mean, they're going to be lucky to be living out of a trailer. Yeah. That's how much we hate them now. I know. And, they, and like, this is, this is very standard, though, I think, from the way the media treats it, usually rich people, right? Like, if you can vilify a rich person enough, they will just keep coming after you. Absolutely. And it, 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 you're just a name brand now. Absolutely. I thought this was your anniversary. Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought we were going to, I thought I was here to play What's the Lie? The Chewing the Fat Game Show. Do we I have love the music? It. 
Do we, we have? have oh, wow. You don't have to do it. Just sing it. Da, 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 da. It's time for What's the Lie? Okay, all right. What's the Lie? Now, That's Jeffy, right. you do this. Hold on. Let me explain that you do this on your podcast. Is it like once a once year? A week. Once, once a week. Okay, once, once a, a week. Once a week. We, I was a guest uh, Once in a while we bring contestant. in a celebrity yep. to, well, uh, usually you know, to be a contestant on the game show. Pass in the hall. You had the janitor on last <laughs> Come week. Come on, stop it. Uh, so you do this game. All right, I like this. What's the lie? Let's do it. You ready? Yes. All right, what's the lie? I'll give you four headlines. One of them is not true. Mm -hmm. One of them is the lie. Mm -hmm. All right, headline number one. A dead shark was hung in a Florida high school lobby as a senior prank. Headline number shark. two. Mm -hmm. Ohio real estate agency fines $60,000 for upselling houses by claiming Neil Armstrong lived in them. <laughs> headline number three. What? Danica Patrick has had her breast implants removed. Mm. Headline number four. Florida police officer has run over a sunbather on the beach. Those are your four headlines. One of them is a lie. Mm, okay. Dead shark hung in a Florida high school lobby as a senior prank. Ohio real estate agency fined $60,000 for upselling houses, claiming Neil Armstrong lived in them. Danica <laughs> Patrick has had her breast implants removed. Florida police officer has run over a sunbather on the beach. Mm. Now, I, Which one is the lie? And I'm so, I talk, I'm going to talk through this a little bit. Okay, Danica <laughs> Patrick, I saw her post a picture of herself uh, without boobs. Like, without the fake boobs. And she said, I wish I could have told this person back then not to get the boob implants. So it's very possible she did get them uh, removed. So I'm going to eliminate that one. Uh, the real estate Neil Armstrong story I freaking love. And it's totally the type of thing you would do if you were a real estate agent. Why not? 100%. Like, yeah, Neil Armstrong, I'm pretty sure he used to live here. Uh, but that's really specific. Why Neil Armstrong? It's so weird. I'm going to cross that one out. That leaves me with the high school shark and the police officer running. Over a sun sunbather. I could definitely beach. see a police officer running over a sunbather. The high school shark thing seems really bizarre. But I'm going to say, because of that, I'm going to do the game, the Princess Bride and I game. know Glenn brought a present, which he took away. But if you get this right, Stu, you could win a Blaze coffee cup. He brought in Johnny Carson's. If you, you get this right, Stu, you could get a Blaze coffee cup. I think it, the fake one is the police officer running over the sunbather. Oh, man. <laughs> You're taking the I mug. I wish you really? would have won. Yeah, I wanted you to win. Bad, but that's not correct. Uh, all right, well, which one was it? Neil Armstrong. No, really? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. didn't think you were that creative. That's really though. annoying. Well, thank congratulations you. if you sold the house using that, though. <laughs> yeah, Let me know. True. That's a good idea. Uh, we should get with realestateagentsitrust.com. Get them to jack some of these prices up. Nice. We'll, we'll talk to Glenn about it. Jeff Fisher, he's the host of Chewing the Fat right here on uh, Blaze TV and, of course, the podcast network. Make sure to uh, join uh, uh, him on his podcast when he does this stupid game like once a week. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us with our uh, 500th illustrious episode, Jeff. Fisher. Oh, congratulations, Stu. It's happy to happy to be here. Do this. Well, thank you so much for hanging out for our 500th episode. Big announcement here. As you know, we have to just do it. We have to do it. Our 500th episode anniversary power hour is coming. Yes, July 8th is when we're going to do it. Uh, and here's the special thing about this particular power hour. You can come. Yeah, you can be here. You can hang out with us as we do it. Maybe have a few drinks of your own. See if you can keep up the pace with us uh, here at the studios. Uh, all you have to do is go to stewdoespowerhour.com. Get signed up for all the details. stewdoespowerhour.com. I will tell you, these are absolutely ridiculous, fun events. They're a total blast. And if you have an opportunity to be here for this one on July 8th, make sure you do it. stewdoespowerhour.com. Go sign up right now. We'll see you for episode 501 tomorrow.